The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, Dow is uh, down 139 on this Wednesday, the 3rd of January. Um, you know, yesterday we made an all-time high, an all-time high. I mean, this is really interesting. Uh, what a divergence we had. Let me just get my little arrow right here. There it is. So we go to the high of 40, uh, sorry, 37,790 yesterday, all-time high. And then we pull back all time high in January. It might be this is the only high it makes uh, all week. Who knows? But it made an all time high. And that extends leg C in the monthly chart to say that no matter what happens, you cannot get a peak C unless all of January, all of February has a lower high because. If this is January's candle and you've gone to a leg C extension, even though it was by 10, 12, 15 points, it means that you have to wait for all of January to complete. But then you've got the next bar, and that means that the whole bar of February cannot make a new high or whatever the January high is so that you can call it a peak C. Then March goes to a leg D, imagine, right? And that means you've got to wait until April before you can get a peak D. So this is still very bullish. And the weekly chart is extended to leg. I, I really think it's an A and not an F. So, so far, that's all very bullish. Short term, there's something completely different that's going on. Dow makes an all-time high yesterday of 37,790. But the QQQ, it made its high. Four days ago, uh, that was December the 28th, was it? Yeah, 28th. I mean, so just type that in. Uh, December the 28th at 412, 28, 23, 412.93. And here it is, 12 points low at 400.26, down 2.32. The nine period moving average is still over the 14, but it's turning down. The MACDs already turned down sharply. The stochastic, which is way up in the 95% area, actually it was even high, 97%, has now pulled back under 80%. Now, the big thing is this, that I, I've, I've discussed very frequently over the years in my webinars for subscribers to my opening call. If you're a subscriber, you can get all these webinars. And I discuss that what's the... What's the counterpoint of a stochastic that's holding in the 95, 97% area? Is that it holds? Because as long as it's holding there, that's very positive. But what will happen if it starts to invert? What happens if it starts to reverse? <clears throat> well, it goes under 80%. But very often, <clears throat> it goes quite a bit under 80%. As you can see right here, it went down to the 46% level in late December and then started to rally, that nine period moving average never once got even close to turning green, uh, to turning pink, staying green, which is very positive. But now look at the steepness of this decline. This is the QQQ. So this is something to monitor. And I have no choice but to consider the tiny little doji candle of the last week of December in the weekly chart of the QQQ is an alternate count. F slash B, I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of one of them when the time comes, but right now it's saying <clears throat> leg B in the monthly chart could become a peak B if all of January doesn't go above 412.92. That's a big ask, but I'm just saying that's what would happen to make it a peak B. In the meantime, on the very short term, look at the S&P. The S&P is pulling back quite sharply. It's down 26 um, points at 4,716. Made, made a a recovery high. The all-time high is 48.18.62 back in January uh, 2022. In fact, it's probably exactly two years ago to the day. 
And now what we're looking at, or maybe one day, one day short. So most importantly, what we're looking at is this is a shorter term pullback in the in the daily chart, the weekly chart. It doesn't even look like a, an eye blink here. It, it just we've had a move from 4103 to 4793, and now we're at 4716. That's just nothing. But look at that tiny doji candle from last week. That to me looks like there should be a pullback to the 46, uh, 39 period moving average. And then 45, 70 is the 14 period moving average. To get that green in the weekly chart, first of all, to get the green in the daily chart to turn pink, oh, you'd probably have to see this at 46.92 to 46.88. <clears throat> and in the weekly chart, you'd have to see it even much, much lower. You'd have to see it at 45.40. I just I don't see that right now, but I do see an extremely overbought situation, which is the reason why. And I'll go through this. I discussed it yesterday with Tom in an interview that the Dow gave me the same. Partly the same signal as it gave August the 1st when the unbalanced volume gave that a fantastic reversal on the exact day, August the 1st, uh, where we actually went short the Dow. Um, and that was. Uh, in the Dow itself, 35,679 was the high. We went short just a, maybe just a little bit lower than that on that particular day. And we went short the Dow um, on Friday. So it was a day early, but still only 12 points or so, 25 points away from the high. And more importantly, it's really just the start of something is to say, hey, all my indicators say this is oversold, um, over, sorry, overbought. And th that is the indicators that I consider really important. But that stochastic, which is probably the most important, is at 93 percent. I'll take it a moment now to discuss this. So I don't want to go through it too much. I'll, I'll talk about it over the week. But you can see that in the Dow, that doji candle right there so that the unbalanced volume went to a high and in volume it's only fractionally higher than the high of yesterday in unbalanced volume so this is really the start but what happened here and i said to subscribers are we here is this very much the same thing here's the nine over the 14 and look how long it took the nine over the 14 after that unbalanced volume reversal in the in the dow uh, to the day, how long it took, seven or eight days before sessions, I should say, not days, it was sessions, before it turned pink. So is that going to happen here? I have no idea. I'll put a question mark. So what I'm looking at here is we've done our homework, we've got our stops in place, and we'll see what happens, what's happening next. And all I can say is that it might take until the end of the week before the green nine period moving average even gets close. But the most important thing that I had was this particular pattern that I drew in, the rectangle pattern that says you can make an arch formation going slightly above the left side high. That's that peak F right there. And then you got to watch it carefully because if it arches over, in this particular instance, any close below 37,200 in the next couple of days, and we're still way above that rate of 37,000. Or 90 would say, uh oh, be careful on the short term. As I say, the weekly charts are also looking real good. We'll be back. That was down 227, SMB's down 31. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians on. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, 
you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So Jeff A. in the Tiger YouTube wanted to know, was, that wasn't in 2017 we also made just a slightly higher high, just like we did right now in, in the Dow. Yeah, that, that was a little different. I, I don't really want to go into that now other than to say, if you recall, um, in 2007, what happened was we had that sell-off, very sharp sell-off right there. That was at the high of 1555 uh, in July of 2007. And then everyone said, oh, this is it, this is it. And I said, you know, my some of my technicals are still very strong. I, something's not right here. I think we're going to get in the weekly chart a pattern that I call the double hump, you know, in, in there are camels that have not one hump, but two humps. So there's a particular, I always make a little kind of a, a joke about the whatever technique I used to have, what I used to call the double tops, this exact double top, a, a drop bucket, because you know how a backhoe d digs the sand up, lifts it up, and then just opens it up and whoosh, everything falls out. That's like the same thing here. So <clears throat> what happened in the weekly chart is I said, I think we're going to get a rally. I don't know if it'll go to new highs, but... It might be that pattern I call the double hump that goes to um, like an E slash C or, or a G slash D, something like that. It has these two little hiccups to the upside, fools everyone, and then it just tumbles. And that's exactly what we got. So, yeah, you're, you're correct, but the time, it wasn't just a two-day thing. It was this, is, this is over a period of weeks if we're talking about the same thing. All right, so with that said, let me just go through a couple of things that I think are really important right now. Dow is the Dow is down 232. This is still nothing. I mean, we've had 232 up days, uh, price wise, so many times. Just uh, the Dow is plus 50, and then whoosh, all of a sudden it goes up 250 or 300 or 400. Um, and a couple of uh, very sharp down days, but not that many. This is different. This is what I said last week. I was exactly at this time Wednesday. So I was saying, you know what? I think what we're looking at is the chance that Friday is actually a day that closes below the highs. And that we come into the market on Monday night, the January the 1st, where the futures open. And they suddenly turn down. And that Tuesday morning, 
we have a very weak session and it is it comes everybody says what is a, who would have thought of that we thought you know we're going to new highs new highs new highs and it comes as an absolute surprise and what that what that would mean is that you get a, a sharp pullback and then those people that wanted to short didn't have a chance trying to look for the opportunity for the market to alleviate that selling pressure have a bounce and then they can short they've hardly had a chance to even do that so this to me says the the three aspects I was looking at was one, there was a chance of a surprise sell-off, which is why we went short on Friday, short the down, short the, the one that I thought would be the weakest, which is the semiconductors. We got the SOXS three times long, a short position, small but aggressive. Um, we take a little bit off, uh, you know, the fact that it's now up um, way over 20 percent in a, just uh, two sessions is just. We've already taken a little bit, so you just have to. You just got to do money management with this. You can't really tell. But that was number one was that there would be a surprise sell-off. Not a surprise to us because we were prepared for it, but a surprise for many people. That's number one. Number two is the duration might be, it might be severe and short-lived because of the surprise factor. Therefore, that nine-period moving average, I'm showing you the S&P right now, might not even get a chance to turn pink before there's a decent bounce. And then that's the next one that you got to watch for the next decline after that, if there is one. And the third thing is, <clears throat> it's going to be rotational. Wow, I did not believe it could be as rotational as it was yesterday. You had the Dow make an all-time high and then give back a little bit. And even today, it's just a little bit big deal, 240 points, it's just nothing. But what we did see was... The QQQ, the NDX 100, look at this QQQ, three, not four, three, three, three Qs, um, turned down. And one of the things I was looking at here, look at this. Well, I can't look at that because that is there. Uh, look at that tiny doji, two doji candles, very kind of doji-ish candles after such a massive move going from the 40,400s to the 17,000, 17,000s. And yet you get the end of the run is this tiny, these tiny little candles. And look what we were going to. And I said, there's a chance that this week we can get this kind of very, I, I have no choice. I'm going to have to put this in. This is an E, F. This is an F slash B right here. That's an E slash A. That's an F slash B. Um, I've got to watch this very closely. Why? Because, let's go back to the Qs. Whoops. Let's go back to the Qs right here. Because the volatility index, and I'll get to that in a moment, is really important to monitor at that stage. And what I'd said was I was I was a little concerned that the volatility index, yes, the VIX index, VIX on X, there it is, um, had such a big move yesterday when we were almost at all-time highs in the Dow, but certainly not all-time highs uh, after two or three days in the Qs. Or the S&P, I don't have the New York Stock Exchange anymore, but I'm sure the same thing with the NYSE. And that was important that we actually pull back. And by the end of the day, the VIX index went to the lows of the day, around about 13.05 or so, after getting to the 14s, and it pulled back. To me, that was really, really important. And it was important for three reasons. Number one is, I do not like the volatility index to expand tremendously right off the top. To me, that's just, that's more hysteria. Number two is, the VIX index can do it, but I love what happened yesterday. We were close towards the lows and said, oh, never mind, never mind. Now, today is the follow through. To me, that was the most important thing, both in the market being weak, the day is young, anything can happen by the end of the day. But we've had some quite intense selling pressure. Um, we've had a nice comeback in Microsoft and a couple of the other, the, the Magnificent Seven that really took a tumble yesterday, especially in, the, in NVIDIA. Let's see where NVIDIA is trading right now. Uh, come back a little bit. No, it's still down seven or well, 6.8 at 474. Uh, look at that double top. And I said, this is going to be one of the most unusual patterns I've ever seen in a chart goes to an all time high. In the daily chart, um, 502.66 was the high in NVIDIA way back 
in the 24th of August. Let me just remember that, 502.66. But then it goes to 505.48. There's no other way I could count that. That is a peak B. And then it goes to a higher, it goes to 504.33. It doesn't take out that left side high. And now it's got a peak C1, potential C1, which acts like a D right there, and a potential C2 right there. <laughs> and that takes the place of all the others. So it would be so unusual to fail at a peak B at an all-time high in the daily chart. Oh, it's happened so rarely. I could I probably, if I even remembered, I'd be able to count them on one hand. So let's just watch this very closely because this is still just a high-level consolidation in NVIDIA. What's the big deal? The 505 is the all-time high. It's trading at 474 right now. Most recent low is in the 450 area. Um, it's just in the sideways range. So the three things I'm looking at in the VIX is, where does it close the day today? I need to see, can it hold the highs as the Dow closes? Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, so let me just show you that IWM also had these two tiny little gojis at, at its most recent recovery high. In the 205s, it's trading at 196 right now. So the daily charts just say, hey, this is the kind of action you look at at turns. Now, the difficult thing at this particular stage is, what do you do when you are looking at this um, 
but you have you are tempted based on your looking at say the e mini you're tempted to try to play the long side so what i've done uh, and I've, I, I've i've actually been way way better at this for quite a while now uh, I, I i used to still like to trade the counter trends but i'm trying to stick as much as i can <clears throat> to the major trend we have a couple of people in the den uh, uh, John's one in particular who really looks at trends and he tries to stay with the direction of the trend for his major, the major core positions, and then he'll trade around it. So this is something I did for my CD, introducing the Chapman Wave uh, methodology CD book that um, is now kind of out of print, but I'm just figuring out how I can ever make this back again into something that's a viable entity. But if in, in the way the web works, if I had to post anything right now, I'd lose copyright. It'll just go out there. It'll be it'll be gone. So I didn't really want to do that. I didn't spend my life trying to develop all these techniques so that I could just throw it away. Um, it's something that I need to uh, I need to fine fine tune uh, to a certain degree. So look, you see this see the gray line. You see these gray bars going up. Well, you see this arrow, this red line, and the arrow down. So you've got to identify the trend and then trade with the trend. And one of the things I like to say is <clears throat> if the tide is coming in, you can throw a piece of driftwood into the water, and no matter what happens, that driftwood keeps on being pushed against the, 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 um, the, uh, to the sand or the beach or whatever it is. If the tide is going out, out and you throw your piece of driftwood in, it just keeps going out. It just keeps, that's the tide. If you identify the tide, yes, within that you can get whipsaws, you can get, um, uh, you can rip tides, you can get tsunamis, you can get all sorts of things. But basically what you want to do is to trade the trend. Why? Because if you're long and you're early, you're wrong, but the tide will save you. If you're wrong and you're going against the tide, well, I know this out of personal experience of being a, a, a really fine sprinter, but a most horrible swimmer, even though I grew up in the water and I used to surf and stuff like that. I mean, body surf, not the real thing, just these tiny waves. Um, lousy swimmer. I, I, three times I can just remember offhand that I almost drowned. Um, I, I mean, really close to drowning. One, I was talking to a friend and I couldn't, my toes couldn't reach the bottom of the water and I was trying to paddle to kind of talk with him and I was too embarrassed to say to him uh, Brian can you just hold me a little bit because I'm I think I'm about to drown and thank goodness as I was I was desperate I was about to say that somehow or other the tide must have pushed me in a little bit deeper and I got I, I, towards the towards the beach so I managed to get my feet on the ground so yeah so the tide to me is most important so wait this is the wrong way. Look, if you're shorting all the way down, you could be really good. Oh, sorry, if you're buying all the way down, you could be really good because you can get these little tiny waves to the upside. But the major tide is this. Doesn't that look correct? The tide is going up and your price is going up. The MACD is going up. The stochastics going up. And on the way down, you can short because the tide is going to save you. So I wanted to get that out of the way because I think that's Right now, that's really important to me. Why? I don't want to be too quick to do any covering. I think taking little bits off to make profits and, and garner some um, um, well-deserved reward, yeah. But the tide seems to me that we've changed on the daily. Not the weekly yet, but the daily tide is changing. The nine-period moving average needs to cross negative, and it hasn't done that to get a confirmation that the tide could go, in fact, even further to the downside. We haven't got that yet. Now, let me do the same thing with gold. Remember, I spoke about this. I said sideways action. Um, yes, it's pretty good when you think about what the dollar's done, though. Uh, actually, gold should have been way up in the 2170s. So this move at 20.43 is just saying, ah, oh, it's struggling. And if you look at silver, that was the clue to me to say the silver was the one that was really acting. Here's your dreaded H pattern, lowercase h. There it is. Fails at a peak B. We don't know if it's failed yet, but the tide seems to be turning to the downside. And the weekly chart is now underneath the Chapman Wave inside track, a, a propellant zone. And not only that, 
you've got the nine period moving average back to pink, negative, and the monthly charts of that silver. If you look at high grade copper, it's put, if you're looking at high grade copper, let me get there. High grade copper. Yep, pulling back um, after that peak D. We're always looking at peak Ds in the Chapman Wave methodology. That's where you can. You don't have to, but that's where you can get pretty deep uh, slides. And we're getting that in the high grade copper. Let's look at crude oil. Crude oil is up uh, 2.27 at 1766. So I spent quite a bit of time going through the charts of ExxonMobil, uh, CVX, and RIG. Let's go to RIG. <clears throat> and it tells me that even here, you remember I spoke about this as, as we were going into the end of last week, I said there could be a rotational correction, and we're going to see which, <clears throat> which stocks in the sieve stay above the netting or which fall right through the cracks, and that's going to be important. So rig and some of the oil offshore drilling, oil and gas, they're not doing as well. So the reason why I looked <clears throat> at... Um, at the big multinational oil companies is they got a dividend. Well, you don't want to be buying dividend stocks when the capital is going to be just wiped wiped off the face of the earth. Look at this Exxon Mobil. If you were buying, we had a lot of people say to me, ah, Exxon's going to the moon. It was up at 120, 119. I said, you know, I don't think so. I think it's stuck in a range and it could actually start to make lower lows and lower highs. Well, if you bought at 115 and now you're at 103, that's 10. That's a 10% risk to your big capital. So who cares about your dividend if that's the case? The dividend means nothing. But wait a minute, we've got Verizon. Look at that move, move in Verizon. Um, this is this breakout from yesterday's high to today's candle in leg B. And then leg C, now leg C in the weekly chart. This is the first time that these stocks, which also give dividends, telephone, look at this. Look at that move. So it goes to peak F right there. F. And then it goes to A. That's an A because there's your starting point right there. That's an A. That's an A right there. So that's a B. And now it's leg C in the daily. And the leg F, maybe it's an alternate account because this could be a Chapman Wave inside right there. Instant restart, look at that. Right there, so that's E, and this could be F slash B. I, I'm very intrigued. Look at the horrible action in AT&T from when, when it was in, at 30, and it gets cut in half, goes down to, uh, to the 14, 13 area, and here it is at 17. So I, I, this is what I'm talking about. The rotation says there are areas. Hey, Lily, a question in the den about Lily. Let's see this in the farm. Yep, Lily's come alive again. It, got, it was fantastic, but a sharp pullback. And now it's with you. I'll do that when we get back. I was down 266. SB's down 35. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So, in the Champ Wave methodology, the Champ Wave instant restart is just a phenomenal technique that I, I discovered, of course, trial and error, and a very expensive way to discover, years ago, decades ago. <clears throat> and I just, it, it amazes me why it still works in this day and age. I, I don't know why, but what I see within three bars after a peak D, a new recovery high, now I've learned, and I've emphasized it here in the den for all our tigers, that if you get to a G slash C, it happens so often that you can, in fact, get a D after that. We just saw that in the Dow. The Dow did exactly that thing. So the monthly chart, and I can't believe how many monthly charts have been doing the same thing over the last year, probably a year and a half. But this is an instant restart in Eli Lilly right here. That means I have no choice but to consider this as a G slash C. And as long as the technicals, which are absolutely fantastic in the monthly chart, continue to hold like this, it should go to a D. And then you've got to be careful. That means it should go over 629.97, the high of October of 2023. That's the way I'm looking at it. And if you look at the rectangle, you see why a rectangle pattern is so important? Look, we've been in the rectangle We've gone up to the top, back again, Hells walking the nine-period moving average and the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart. The technicals are still very weak, but that nine is way strong above the 14, and that to me is very important, and that just says yes. That's where you can anticipate. Now, in the chat wave, I'll just do this because uh, it, the question was asked. This, so you had a peak E right there, and you pull back, then you went peak A, peak B, Pull back, but held that low that was at about 548. And here it is. So this becomes every single peak from this low right here gets notated. That's your obligation in the Chapman Wave methodology right there. It's the only obligation. Easy. So look at this. That's an A. That's a B. This is an A until it goes above that B. So that's an A. This is an A. This is an A. This low, oops, this this lower one here is an A. I just want to put all those A's. It looks so crazy, right? That's an A. That's an A and that's a B. But then it goes even lower. That's an A and that's another B. And finally, you've got yourself a C right there. That C is underneath that previous B. But that's the one that's because this is your starting point. Every peak is notated. So, yeah, you find finally at leg C in the daily chart, and this is a gray A, that's a gray A, this is now a B, and we'll see if it goes above that, it starts an E right there. So yes, this is very strong, Eli Lilly looking very good, and that's my suspicion, that the stocks that have had really good earnings have a real special, I mean, Eli Lilly has all these different drugs and, and, and their approvals, everything's working to their benefit, and it shows up on the chart, right? <clears throat> And that is really important. So the answer is 
How about Lily, if time allows? Yep, time allowed, because it was really important to look at that, just as I wanted to look at the other areas. Let's just see if the XLU, which is the uh, XLU is the S&P Utility Spider Fund, went to DEFG right there, above the 200-period moving average, and then kaplop, E, F, G, and that gets a down arrow, and then it's kind of stalled. And then in a weekly charge at a peak B. Yeah, so this is holding okay because it's utilities, it has a relationship to the to rates going a little higher. Oh, I never even did that. So let's just go to the TLT. Am I typing in the right place? Yes, I am. The TLT made a peak G. G slash C, this looks to me like it's going to become just a G. And had a, a doji candle, a silent doji after the high was made. Another doji yesterday, even another doji today. Uh, 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 TLT is down 1.06, and look at the TNX.X. That is the 10-year in this leg A right here, gray A, because I don't have any confirmation this is going to be going. Uh, I don't know yet how high it's going to go, but this is an A, and it's at 39.95, and 40.89 is the 200-period moving average. I'd call that a potential target, but look at this. Yes, the dollar, uh, DXY. So you've got your yields going up. You've got your dollar going up. The dollar is up at 102.54. That's what I said. I drew this in. I said, yes, your left side, right side price time match. Look what happened. It went to the exact day of this midpoint, the plumb line from October. Uh, this was October the 3rd, 107.35. Then it makes a cup formation. And I said, one of the techniques I use is to use the bottom of the cup for my left side, right side, if it looks visual, because it doesn't look mathematical, it looks visual. And then this is my inside tra inside wedge target support line right there, and it went right to it on five days before, five trading sessions ago, and that was the 28th, I think it was. Yep, the 28th, it hit 100 and, 100 and 100.62. And yeah, we are at 102.54, almost two points higher for the dollar. Two points like this to the upside after all the downside action. This is kind of important. And that's another reason why I think there's some kind of selling going on. So that was the dollar. The TLT is a little different. TLT, oh, I keep forgetting to do this. I did it. I always do it. I did it on the TBT, and then I forgot all about the midpoint. Here's the TBT. That's the inversion of the, uh, that is the, Lehman 20 a short, uh, Lehman 20 a treasury bond fund. Look at that. It went right to that base of support, and now it's running off the chain wave inside wedge. Ah, I forgot to make it red. Dash pink. Is there really what I like to do? Dashed pink. There it is. So this is just a bounce, but it's a pretty decent bounce at 31.23 up 62 cents. Um, yeah, so all of those things are coming together to say, just be kind of careful here. Now, another thing that was really important, you know, PAVE, I've spoken about this for so long. This is this is the Global X U.S. Infrastructure and Development ETF. It went to a peak F with a doji candle on the, I think, believe it was the 28th. I think it was the 28th. And there's a little question mark because I'm about to put it down. I haven't got it yet. But look at that sharp move. And you can see Alcoa. We had Alcoa. And I said, we're going to raise the stop. I'm not messing around. I, I want to make, take a profit when you've got gains while they're there. So we got out of it. We, we were in at 33.50, took a tad off the 34.45. That was about almost a 3% gain. And then we're all out yesterday, 33.80 for a fractional gain uh, on the overall. And now look where it is. It's at 31.11. Look at the speed that a peak D can turn around at. And it, I also said, I don't like this, a very quick peak A, P, C, D, in a, in especially in a weekly chart with one or two bars in between, and then a doji candle. That just says, be careful, there could be quite a sharp pullback. I want to buy Alcoa again, but I don't want to do it just yet. I want to wait. And this rotation says, watch Caterpillar. What is Caterpillar doing? Whoa, I didn't even update it. Caterpillar I went to a peak F, after an instant restart, F. G slash C, that definitely looks like a G. I'll put a question mark there to see what we're going to do over the next two days. Very sharp move down nine at 283. And a peak B, E slash B 
in the weekly charts, E slash B. Um, and UF, uh-huh, in the monthly chart, so even Caterpillar is pulling back by sharp. So infrastructure is coming. Uh, I'll be right back. Dow is down uh, almost 300 points, s down 76. That's the champion. Tiger Day Christian. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And my contention has always been in the marketplace, always be aware that the market loves surprises. And I, I put this now down to a surprise. I suspect that there were a lot of people that never thought 
going into the beginning of the year, just as before we even got into the beginning of the year, that the markets have started to decline. So that says to me, you've got speed to the downside. And you remember the chart we were looking at? I wonder if I can just get it back here. This is it. Yes. Remember, this is not what you want to be doing. The tide is down. That's why for those people doing intraday trading and all, take your profits as soon as you can if you're going against the tide because the tide is very strong right now. And it's the surprise tide. It means that there's room for the tide to continue at this point. Even if there's a sudden late uh, uh, rally to the upside, some serious damage has been done in the very short term. So with that said, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rose and all the great programming. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. As I say, we do have two shorts uh, in the uh, newsletter. We've started to raise cash. And uh, the semiconductor short is doing very nicely. 